Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this important life. It's an important life. Today we'll be talking about capability analysis. Yeah, by far one of the most important topics in Lean Six Sigma. Yeah, but first of all, please let me know if you can hear me okay. If you can see me okay. Hello, Harold. Please let me know on any scale from zero to ten. Please let me know if you can hear me okay. It's raining quite a lot here in Brazil right now. So I hope, yeah, I hope that the noise, yeah, is not kind of um, annoying for you, yeah? Um, I have just installed some interesting, you know, uh, let's say device here. So, <laughs> so hopefully, yeah, the external noise is not um, disturbing our session. I hope that the audio is is good for you all. And once again, I am very happy to see here, you know, Harold, Fidel, Sam, Abir, Rachel, Olatumbi, Cosmas, Chipo, Francis, Gok, Amari, Messias, uh, Edgar, Yakubu, Eduardo, April, Professor Zia, Max, uh, Sokia, Sokaina, and everybody else that is here joining us live for this conversation, okay? So it is very, very hard. I would say, I would say, Professor Marcelo would say, it is impossible, it is impossible to talk about continuous improvement to talk about operational excellence, to talk about Lean Six Sigma without understanding the size of the problem. It is impossible. It is impossible. And I have something to tell you. Unfortunately, many companies still run projects, continuous improvement projects, without knowing exactly exactly what they are trying to solve. Unfortunately, it is still common to see companies building, creating action plans without knowing <laughs> even the problem that they are trying to solve, nor, nor how big is this problem. And then, and then, when you, when you are creating an action plan without knowing the problem that you want to solve, and as a consequence, without measuring the size of the problem, there is an immense, a huge risk that you simply waste your time. I know this is not comfortable. I know this is not, you know, comfortable to listen, to hear, you know, but this is the reality. I prefer that you feel uncomfortable now with Professor Marcelino, but then in one month from now, in six months from now, you say thank you to me here on YouTube or, you know, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Telegram or via email. <laughs> You know, because you've ch you've changed your way, you know, to 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 see, you know, processes and uh, to operate to operate under this umbrella of continuous improvement. Please, 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 do not build an action plan without having a proper picture of the size of the problem. Don't do that. Don't do. No, Marcelo, but I know that we have lack of standardization, lack of training. We have lack of, lack of, lack of. <laughs> Stop. 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 Stop doing that. You are very likely wasting your time, your energy, and very likely wasting other people's time.
Does it make sense? Type here for me in our chat window. Does it make sense or not? We need to have a good picture of the size of the problem. We must have. And I have something to tell you. The most powerful, the most complete, the most complete picture in terms of the size of the problem is capability analysis. Capability analysis considers central tendency, variation, and customer specifications in one single number. In one single number, you can have, a, you know, in one single number, yeah, you can, you can represent location, central tendency, spread, variation, and customer specification. So capability analysis is by far one of the most important topics in Lean Six Sigma. Yeah? Please do not, do not present, do not present the, si present the size of the problem indicating mean only. No, 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 no. This is a huge mistake. This is a huge mistake in the Lean Six Sigma context. Do not represent the size of the problem with a diagnostics of stability only. No, no, no. This is incomplete. Incomplete. You must check stability, but you must present at least one capability index. There are many, there are many different capability indexes, yeah? But you must present at least one. The most popular ones, CPK, PPK, Sigma level, Sigma level. And I'll be showing you here that Sigma level must be your favorite capability index. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. So I know that here we have people that are completely new to Lean Six Sigma. Uh, we have here white belts, we have here yellow belts, we have here green belts, we have here black belts, and we have here master black belts. Okay, I know that. So after this introduction, I need to let you know that Probably in the next, in the next um, 40 minutes, 40 minutes, I'm going to talk about some, um, some technicalities of Lean Six Sigma. So the conversation from now on will be, will be um, a little bit more technical. I am opening up a software named Minitab, okay? There are other softwares that you can use to run your capability analysis. I do prefer Minitab, not because I am uh, a Minitab official trainer. I am an official Minitab partner here in Brazil. Yeah. And I am one of the few uh, Minitab trainers uh, in the globe. Yes. In the globe, in the world. Um, I, I, I am having this amazing opportunity to be very close to the to the Minitab experts yeah in the United States to be mentored by them and it's a true pleasure you know to be an official instructor of Minitab but once again you can use any software and by the way I strongly recommend that you do not have you know um, a software where you are kind of dependent, fully dependent on it, okay? Please don't be fully dependent on any software, on any software, okay? Uh, I have also to tell you, if you are new to this world, that Minitab is the most used statistical software in the globe. And in my humble opinion, there is a reason for that. There is a reason for that, yeah? Wonderful. So please take a look here. Take a look here. I'm gonna 
I'm gonna use an example that I have never used before. Uh, there is a food here in Brazil named cheese bread. Yeah, I have never used this example before. And so let's consider the cheese bread uh, weight. Yeah, and uh, I am here generating some random data. I want to generate 100 data points. Yeah. And by the way, by the way, in order to have a proper picture in terms of the size of the problem, I do strongly recommend that you have at least 100 data points. Yeah, because a capability analysis, we are talking about inferential statistics. Once again, for capability analysis, we will be always talking about inferential statistics, meaning I am evaluating a sample you know part of the population and inferring projecting projecting i'm i am kind of a you know it's it's <laughs> it's almost like a crystal ball you know about the, the the population about the true process and every time that we are inferring we are automatically talking about margin of error. We are automatically talking about uh, standard error. Yeah, we are automatically talking about a confidence interval, confidence interval. And 100 data points, this number is associated to what we consider a good precision, a good precision for your capability indexes. Okay, so we are talking about a proper confidence interval because if your sample size goes down, your confidence interval, you know, yeah. So you are losing precision. You are losing precision, you know. Yeah, so we, we you, you need to be very careful. Yeah, with sample size, with sample size, and again, our recommendation is at least 100 data points, preferably divided into 25 subgroups, meaning it's a sample, remember. So I'll go to the process every hour, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12, you know, 1 p.m., 2 p.m. And every time that I go to the process, I take randomly four, four pieces, four parts, you know, Okay, four parts. Next hour, four parts. Next hour, four parts, you know? And then I'll have 25 subgroups by the size of four each. So 100 data points. Uh, it can be four parts per shift, yeah? So four parts shift, morning shift, four parts afternoon shift, four parts um, uh, night shift, you know? The same thing in, in the following days. It can be four parts per day. Yeah, depending on the, um, on the production volume. You know, how many parts you, you produce per day. You know, perfect. Uh, so this is an important recommendation. Yeah, important recommendation. And so, uh, wonderful, excellent, excellent. First of all, I should check, I should check stability. I should check stability. And then knowing that I have 25 mm -hmm. subgroups by the size of four, I would run a, a control chart named X bar R. Yeah, so I have the mean of the subgroups. Yes, at the top here. So this is the mean of subgroup. Uh, let me just install. Um, Yeah, so, so here I have the mean of, yeah, can you guys, can you guys see me? Yeah, mean of subgroup A, uh, one, mean of subgroup two, mean of subgroup X bar, yeah, subgroup three, subgroup four, yeah, and here I have the, 
Here I have the range of subgroup ones, one, range of subgroup two, range of subgroup three. Yeah? Perfect. So I have a measurement of uh, what we call central tendons or location that is here. Yeah? And I do have a measurement in terms of uh, variation, dispersion. Yeah? In this case, a range. Because the size, the subgroup size is less than 8. Some authors say less than 10. When you have less than 10 parts per, per subgroup, you should use X bar R. If you have more, you should use X bar S. Yeah, so here you would have a standard deviation, right? Perfect. So, uh, stability. And then now I'm going to run my capability analysis. My capability analysis. Subgroup size is 4. And now I need to indicate. So again, subgroup size is 4. Now I need to indicate, yeah, indicate lower spec and upper spec, yeah, lower spec and upper spec, yeah, and it comes from customer, it comes from customer, yeah, so let's suppose I want to have my cheese bread weight at least with 9, yeah, and a max, max, 12 okay so from 9 from 9 to 12 again who defines that customers customers will define that yeah and then we do have here and well, let me change let me change to percentage percentage yeah So see, see, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll, I'll not start talking about the capability index. Not yet, okay? I'll not talk about this yet. Let me talk about the percentage of cheese breads here in Brazil that are being expected, expected, okay, to be, you know, less than nine grams yeah and more than 12 grams so we are projecting we are inferring we are expecting almost 20 percent almost 20 percent yeah of uh, of uh, cheese breads outside customer specification limits um specifically specifically uh related to weight Yes, to wait. Perfect. This projection, if this is a projection, and it is a projection, it does not come from the data itself. This 19.98% does not come from the data itself. The data itself is pointing out to another number, 17%. 17% of the cheese breads out of these 100, out of these 100, yeah? 17 out of the 100, 17%. comes from the data itself but we are projecting something worst we are expecting something worse than 17% we are expecting 20% based on what based on what based on the probability distribution so ladies and gentlemen Ladies and gentlemen, all capability indexes are not based on the data itself. They are based on the projection. And what is the projection? The projection is the probability distribution. 
So there is no room, zero room for assuming normality, for example. Yeah, let's just assume normality. No, 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 no. Please. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Please, 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 please. Don't make this mistake. Don't make this mistake. There is zero flexibility. Zero flexibility to simply assume that your process behaves according to a normal probability distribution. It is too risky to do that. You must understand what is the best probability distribution that explains your process behavior. You must identify what is the best probability distribution that explains your process. Otherwise, you can be in serious trouble. Serious trouble. Serious trouble. Because if the size of your problem is like this, and you are saying that it is like this, Ooh, ooh, you are closing your eyes, you know? You are closing your eyes to a lot of potential negative effects. If the size of your problem is like this, and you are saying that it is like this, in the future, people will not trust you. People will tag you, will flag you, we will understand that you are this kind of person that is always inflating, inflating the size of the problem. Both, both problems, they have to do with credibility, yeah, with trust, you know. But the, sec the second one annoys a lot, annoys a lot of people, you know, your leadership, your, pe your peers, your customers, you know. And the first one is even worse, is even worse. Because then, like, you are saying that, you know, everything is, you know, that, that everything is, 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 is beautiful. You are saying that the size of the problem is like this, when in fact, it is not. It is not. You know, it's bigger. It's bigger. So, zero flexibility. Zero flexibility zero flexibility to zero flexibility to assume that the probability distribution is normal you must run a, and it's so simple it is so simple so simple yeah you can just come here and run a normality test you can run a normality test and check if p-value is greater than 0.05. Wonderful, p-value is greater than 0.05. So we, now you have a scientific evidence to say that, okay, uh, my, my process behaves according to a normal probability distribution, or the most, let's say, uh, the most accurate way to say is, uh, there is no evidence there is no evidence uh, or enough evidences against normality. Yeah, so we, we can assume. Yeah, we can assume. Wonderful. Yeah. Are you guys, are we on the same page so far? Type here for me if we are good so far. Yeah. If we are good so far. Yeah, beautiful. Wonderful. So this is one important thing to keep in mind. This is an important thing to keep in mind. Zero flexibility to, to, to simply assume normality. So run your normality test. And the recommendation is we should run capability analysis only if our process is stable. Yeah, is stable. If it is not stable, then we should not run a capability analysis. Yes? Perfect. Perfect. Now, my second, 
my second uh, recommendation for you guys, yeah, my second topic in today's uh, uh, session, yeah, is let's talk a little bit about PPK and CPK. And again, guys, this is an open live, obviously, that the, um, the full, you know, uh, lesson is part of, in this case, is part of our green belt and black belt sessions yes green belt and black belt training uh, for black belts we have one specific session where we deep dive on capability analysis for non-normal data in fact we have multiple sessions for capability analysis for non-normal data for green belts we fully explain what is exactly cpk ppk how to check stability how to run a normality test so here um, I am talking about these topics, yes, so you understand the importance of capability analysis, but please keep in your heart that the full, full, full content, it's not our objective here to fully deep dive on that. The objective here is to highlight the importance of the topic and to give you uh, important insights about that, okay? And if you are interested in becoming a green belt or a black belt, uh, we don't have trainings available this year anymore. Yeah, the next waves will be uh, in January 2023. So for this year, we are focusing on Christmas only. <laughs> Marcelinho, Marcelinho is focusing in consultancy, in taking care of the regular students and in Samba, yeah that's it that's it for for 2022 yeah but if you are interested please um please don't don't miss the opportunity very likely we still don't know if it will be january or march yeah 2023 um but very likely uh in in january okay yeah uh wonderful wonderful so see absolutely absolutely max absolutely so see take a look here we do have we do have uh, a conversation here about uh, ppk and cpk that we need to have yeah that we that we must have see that i hope you guys can see see that cpk is always always yeah the the smallest value between cpl and cpu and ppk is the smallest value between ppl and ppu yeah ppl and ppu And in order to explain that, let me show here. Let me show here. Do you think we have problems? Do you think no? Based on this picture, um, the situation is worst, worst on the left side or on the right side? Type here for me. The situation is worst on the left side, yeah, or on the right side. When you look here, the situation is worst on the left side or on the right side. Yeah. On the left side, we have more, we have more, more projected, projected scrap, you know, on the left side or on the right side. Yeah. So on the left side, we are projecting 16% of rejects. On the right side, we are projecting 4%. We are projecting 4%. So on the left side, on the left side, the situation is 
worst. The situation is worst. Yeah. And I want to show you guys something very interesting, very interesting. When I change, when I change the specification limits, and let's suppose now I don't need, I don't need, the upper spec anymore. I don't need upper spec anymore. So there is no 12. I have only lower spec. Okay. Or let's suppose the upper spec is now 20. You know, no, no, no. Let's, let's put just without an upper spec limit. Take a look. This is very interesting. Now, my total, total, total percentage of expected problems, let's say, has reduced from 20% to 16%. But you guys tell me, what happened to CPK and PPK? What happened to CPK and PPK? And once again, let me open up here the results for before. When I had like the two limits, when I had the two limits, the CPK and PPK were 0 0.33. Now that I have only one limit and not 20%, of projected problems now I am projecting 16% in quotes only yeah what happened to my CPK and to my PPK what happened to my CPK and to my PPK they are the same they are the same And this is a problem. <laughs> this is a problem because it's like, like, uh, yes, Eduardo, didn't change. So it's like I am trying to sell my car, my car to Eduardo. And then he asks about the condition of the car. And then I just show, I know there are scratches on the right side and also on the left side. But I just show, I just show the right side or I just show the left side you know this is not cool this is not cool at all I just show the worst side and so how do you dribble this problem yeah how do you manage this problem <laughs> So my recommendation is, my recommendation is, when you are running your capability analysis, go to options, go to options, yeah? And when you click in options, you will find here benchmark Z's, sigma level. And my recommendation is change, change. In fact, you see that we'll have, you, you see, but put sigma level. So you still have CPK, PPK, yeah, very, very popular capability indexes, but you have here a, an additional, an additional capability index, an additional capability index that is sensitive, sensitive to both sides that considers both sides so if i put here the 12 the upper spec limit again 12 yeah see it has changed remember it's not 0 0.99 0 0.98 it has changed it has changed 
So it is extremely sensitive to the total percentage. To the total percentage. The greater the percentage of problems, the boom. The lower will be, the smaller will be the sigma level. You know, so when the percentage of problems goes up, the percentage, the sigma level goes down. Yeah? So see, once again, once again, when I had, when I had only one limit, only one limit, the sigma level was 0 0.99 and 0 0.98. Now that I have two limits, yeah, 0 0.84, 0 0.82. Yeah, because sigma level considers the, er the area under the curve, you know, uh, for the probability distribution. Like on the left side, yeah, so the, the, the expected problems, you know, uh, like below lower spec and also and also the expected problems uh, above upper spec limit. Yeah, the two areas. In fact, Minitab adds, add, Minitab will add them up, you know, boom. And then you consider, you know, uh, the total area to find the sigma level. Yeah, see that the CPK and PPK in both scenarios, in both scenarios, they are the same. So see, here we have PPK 033, PPK 033, here, PPK 033, CPK 033, yeah? Yeah? So how do we solve the rejected ones? Should we overlook if percentages are small? No, see, my recommendation is Felix, let's keep it as simple as possible. Always, always enable sigma level. Always enable sigma level. Always. If, if I had to pick just one capability index, this index would be sigma level. Sigma level. Overall, then I am closing my eyes to, to subgroup subgrouping yeah potential then i am considering considering the the variation within within subgroups yes subgroups but definitely like the the rule of thumb one of the main takeaways of this session is always 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 calculate sigma level always calculate sigma level and on literature, sometimes you will find sigma level equals to three times PPK, three times CPK. Be careful. Be careful. Because if you have problems on both sides, if you have problems on both sides, um, it will not work. It will not work. Because see, if you have problems in one, only in one side, you know, then that works perfectly. Zero zero ehoo. zero thirty three times three zero point ninety nine yeah zero thirty three times three almost almost zero point ninety nine yeah but if you have problems on both side both sides the the formula does not work ppk times three you know we cannot approximate that to zero point eighty four yeah so let yeah, let the software mini tab or any other software calculate um, sigma level based on both areas under the curve yeah was that helpful type here yes or not yeah yes or not was that helpful so capability capability analysis by far by far by far um, the most powerful way to present the size of the problem the most powerful way to present the size of the problem, yes? 
No, for sigma level, it's not 1.33. 1.33, it's for CPK and PVK. For sigma level, is 4. So sigma level should be at least 4. You know, and then we can have, we'll have situations like that. Uh, cheese bread weight, then let's suppose uh, improved. Yeah? Improved. Then, let's suppose we were able to, to reduce uh, variation, you know? Reduce variation. So, you can run. So, you can run another capability analysis. Yeah, another capability analysis with your improved data, improved process, yeah? Then let's suppose subgroup size is 4 as well, 9 to 12. So see that now, uh, I, like, I love this example, like uh, the car is much well parked in the garage. In fact, the garage is the same, but the variation has reduced quite a lot. So see, the sigma level has shifted from 1, 0 0.99 from 1 to 4.69. Wow, it's not a Six Sigma process, but it is a 4.69 without talking about the 1.5 Sigma shift that I strongly uh, recommend you to, to stay away. <laughs> stay away from this conversation. 1.5 Sigma shift. Don't, 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 don't fall into this trap, you know. Uh, sigma level is it's the sigma level that is presented by the software, you know, our area under the curve, that's it, boom. And, and please don't be very careful with the conversation about long term, short term, as your professor, as your mentor, you know, I, I, I do not recommend. I strongly recommend you to stay away, you know, from this, from this kind of conversation. Sigma level is simple simple it's like that and then we can project based on the on the overall standard deviation that means there is no subgroups i'm, I'm closing my eyes to subgrouping yeah or i can have another standard deviation that is calculated based on a composition you know of multiple standard deviations that will come from the from the standard deviation from the variances from each subgroup, you know, uh, and that's it, that's it. And the reason I am saying that is, take a look here. This is our Bible, you know, I strongly, I am a huge fan of ASQ, American Society for Quality. And if you take their BB, their BB handbook, the handbook for black belts, you know, uh, you will find, you will find, on their, I'm gonna tell you exactly the page. So in case you have, uh, you have this book, you can take a look. Okay. Uh, I, I remember the word. I love the word that is abounds, abounds. Yeah, so take a look here. It is on page 173, okay? Of what I consider the, the, you know, the most respected literature in Lean Six Sigma, in my humble point of view, uh, is, you know, the, the, the collection of handbooks from the American Society for Quality. And then here I am showing the one for black belts. You guys will find for, for master black belts as well. I do have on my library, uh, you know, a lot of other handbooks from the ASQ. American Society for Quality is an organization that exists. It's a non, uh, yeah, it's an organization that exists since 1946, if I'm not wrong. And directly or indirectly, um, all quality gurus had some sort of, uh, let's say, collaboration or influence on ASQ. I'm talking about Edwards Deming, I'm talking about Kaoru Ishikawa, I'm talking about Joseph Juran, 
I'm talking about Feigenbaum, I'm talking about Keno from the Keno model, I'm talking about Akao from Q, uh, QFD, yeah? So it's by far the most respected quality organization in the globe. And I am not, I'm not getting like one cent, one dollar to talk about this. I'm talking about this because ASQ changed my life for the better, you know? I have a huge respect for this organization, for this organization. And I, our, our work is strongly influenced, you know, by ASQ. And so take a look on page one, 173, uh, ASQ says, ASQ says, significant confusion abounds and contradictory statements pepper the literature with regard to meaning and determination of short-term and long-term capability and variability. And then ASQ presents the point of view of three different, let's say, sources, you know, a paper from Brifogo, uh, uh, the Automotive Industry Action Group, AIAG, yeah, and a, a 30, you know, uh, let's say, uh, uh, source in terms of uh, talking about short term and long term. So, 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 based on that, I do strongly recommend that you stay away, stay away from this conversation about 1.5 sigma should we add up 1.5 sigma should we not add up the 3.4 ppm is for six sigma or for 4.5 sigma uh, short term long term in my point of view as a researcher as a professor as uh, a practitioner of lean six sigma stay away calculate sigma level this is my baseline sigma level boom that's it period Calculate sigma level in control phase after you implement at, the, at least 80% of your solutions. This is my sigma level before and after. Boom. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You can have one for overall and one for within, as Minitab presents. Overall and within. Yeah. Wonderful, Vindra. Yeah. Wonderful. So, uh, PPU, PPL, CPU, CPL aren't important. Aren't important. Aren't important. Or they are way less important than... Because, see, PPK and CPK... Um, will be, again, the CPK will be the smallest value between CPU and CPL. PPK will be the smallest value between PPU and PPL, yeah? But out of CPK, PPK, and Sigma level, Sigma level is the only one that approaches, you know, that considers both sides. So, bottom line, bottom line, Sigma level, Vindra. And then maybe you guys can ask, Marcelo, but why? Why do we still have CPK and PPK? Because fortunately or unfortunately, CPK, mainly CPK, is so popular. <laughs> it's so popular. In our automotive sector, for example, CPK is the index, it's the capability index. In automotive sector, that's it, it's CPK, you know? So, in this planet, <laughs> when something becomes, you know, uh, popular, many times it's difficult, it's difficult to go against, you know? And again, there is value. There is value in CPK and PPK. There is a lot of value, you know? But again, it's my responsibility as your educator to show that there is a, a, an important limitation. It's an important limitation. It's a, it's a significant limitation. 
you know it's a serious serious limitation so now i'm talking to belts to green belts to black belts to master black belts to yellow belts to white belts. no yellow and white no no because yellow and whites will not be running this capability analysis so now i'm talking to greens and blacks yeah and black belts and 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 masters um it's sigma level <laughs> it's sigma level that's it and now it's just my 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 personal recommendation overall overall sigma level if you need to pick one just one just one because overall is what customers are feeling customers you know don't care about subgrouping <laughs> if for some reason i am taking i am drinking this water and there is a problem in the water i i don't care i don't care if it came from subgroup a or b you know it's my water as a customer there is a problem in my water but for for the process experts for the analysts for the you know for us for us it is important to know you know uh, it is important to consider subgroups mainly mainly to validate if we are talking about um, a structural problem a systemic problem or if we are talking about an outbreak outbreak one problem that is concentrated in one subgroup if your problem is concentrated in one subgroup okay maybe it was one raw material batch maybe it was one operator in one certain condition you know but if it's you know kind of um, present in all subgroups or in the vast majority of the subgroups probably we have a, a systemic problem yeah ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this session it's always a pleasure always a pleasure to be here with you all if there are black belt students here i'll see you guys in one hour <laughs> i'll quickly go to my physical therapy session yeah because of my lower back and then after the physical therapy session i'll be with you all in these uh for black belts it's obviously an exclusive session it's not an open open youtube session yeah and um i am looking forward to seeing you all on another on another open session open session um here on youtube or uh, on any other uh, social social media yeah thank you so much thank you vindra thank you eduardo thank you kelly thank you kelvin thank you so much thank you guys see you bye bye